how can we achieve this in athletes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, do you know what I discovered? I discovered that all the greatest athletes ate this way. Yeah? Yeah. So, the great athlete I worked with was Paula Newby Fraser, who won 28 Ironman. Yeah. And she won 8 to 1 Ironman mm -hmm. triathlons. And I helped her in the 1980s when she went to America. Yeah. And she said I was a major influence on her life. But she asked me, and again, I didn't understand it. She said, tell me, Tim, is it okay if I eat a lot of fat in my diet? I said, yeah, it's fine. Because I didn't understand that she actually restricted carbohydrates. I thought, well, you know, as long as you just take lots of fat and you're eating lots of carbohydrates, perfect. But she actively reduced the carbohydrates and increased fat. And she said that she never took carbohydrates when, in her Ironman races. She used to eat oils, meat, and nuts. That's what she ate. And during the race. During the races. Yeah. During races. And she said, to, I remember her telling me in the 1990s, you can't win the Ironman on pizza and pasta and salads. But I didn't understand what she was actually mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. She came to Cape Town a month ago and I had dinner with her and we ate exactly the same food. And she said, I've always eaten like this. Was it a gut feeling of her? That's a great question. She said, because I was born in Zimbabwe, like me, uh -huh. I was born in Rhodesia. Okay. And like you, your experience, she said, she was brought up on meat. And she said, whenever you were hungry, you ate built on. So, so then Paula asked me, so then I asked her, I said, so when did you, how did you get the idea? She said, because I always ate lots of meat, because that's what we ate in Zimbabwe. And then she said, when I started doing the Ironman, I thought, but hold on, I've got to go and exercise for nine hours or 10 hours. I don't want my bowels to work during those nine hours. So why for three days before am I loading up on foods that I never eat? And she said, I'm not going to, I'm just going to continue to eat as I always have. And she found it worked. The next act is Mark Allen. Mark Allen mm -hmm. also was a paleo yeah. diet. Yeah. And I was being interviewed by, some, a joke, by, by an American group the other day. And the guy said to me, he said, actually, if you spoke to many of the leading Ironman triathletes, you'll find they're all eating this diet and they never admit it because it's a competitive advantage. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're not prepared, yeah. prepared to give away yeah, a competitive yeah, advantage. Yeah, yeah. And so they may well say, oh, I eat all this carbohydrate. And in fact, I saw Mark Allen do that. He was interviewed and they said, well, what do you eat during exercise? And he said, he didn't say anything. And then he suddenly said, no, no, he was asked, why do you win these races? So he said, well, he didn't have an answer. And then he said, oh, I suppose you want me to say it because I take all this carbohydrate during the race. Because no, no, no. Yeah. the industry is so powerful and the dogma is so ingrained. I was, I was speaking again a few nights ago in South Africa and the guy who organizes our Ironman in Cape South Africa. He said, are you telling me that you can do an Ironman without taking any carbohydrate? I said, yes, the best athletes have been doing it for years. But our first study is going to be people who are completely fat adapted and are doing the Ironman. And we want to show how fast they're generating carbohydrates, particularly glucose, mm -hmm. from fat and protein. And that's the question that we're asking. Because it has a fundamental question in the control of diabetes. Because mm -hmm. all diabetics are told that they're not generating glucose rapidly enough. Thank you so much for having me. I Thanks really appreciate it. Spending so much time with us. It's a great privilege. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We are done. Thank you.